Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where I talk about personal finance. Today, I'm going to talk about health saving accounts fill multiple tax needs. Let's get into the video. The health saving account, HSA, is one of the most misunderstood and underused benefits in the Internal Revenue Code. Congress created HSA as a way for individuals with high deductible health plans to save for medical expenses that are not covered by insurance due to the high deductible provisions of their insurance coverage. However, an HSA can act as more than just a vehicle to pay medical expenses. It can also serve as a retirement account. For some taxpayers who have maxed out their retirement plan options, an HSA provides them another res resource for retirement savings, one that isn't limited by income restrictions in the way that IRA contributions sometimes are. Although the tax code refers to these plans as health saving accounts, they can also be used for retirement as there is no requirement that the funds be used to pay medical expenses. First, a taxpayer can pay medical expenses with other funds, first allowing the HSA to grow through account earnings and further tax deductible contributions until retirement. In addition, should the need arise, the taxpayer can still take tax-free distributions from the HSA to pay medical expenses. Withdrawals from an HSA that ain't used for medical expenses are taxable and depending on the taxpayer's age can be subject to penalty. Once a taxpayer has reached the age 65, non-medical distributions are taxable but not subject to a penalty. The same as for a traditional IRA, once the IRA owner wishes age 59 and a half. At the same time, regardless of the age, a taxpayer can always take tax-free distributions to pay medical expenses. An example of that would be, let's say Henry, each age 70, and has an HSA account from which he withdraws $10,000 during the year. He has also unreimbursed medical expenses of $4,000. Of his $10,000 withdrawal, $6,000, which is $10,000 minus from the $4,000, is added to Henry's income for the year, and the other $4,000 is tax free. Eligible individual. To be eligible for an HSA in a given month, an individual, one, must be covered under a HD, HP on the first day of the month. Also, must not also be covered by any other health plan, although there are some exceptions. Thirdly, must not be entitled to medical Medicare benefits, that is generally must be younger than age 65, and must not be claimed as a dependent on someone else return. Any eligible individual, whether employed, unemployed, or self-employed, can contribute to an HSE. Unlike with an RE, there is no requirement that the individual have compensation, and there are no phase-out rules for high-income taxpayers. 
if any HSA is established by an employer, then the employee and or the employer can contribute. Family members or any other person can also make contributions to HSAs on behalf of eligible individuals. Both employer contributions and employee contributions made via the employer's cafeteria plan are excluded from the employee's wages income. Employees who make HSA contributions outside of the employer's arrangements are eligible to take above nine deductions. That is, they do not need to itemize deductions for those contributions. The monetary qualifications for a HDHP, the minimum annual deduction, coverage 2022, self only is 1400, family 2800. For coverage in year 2023, self only is 1500, family is 3000. The maximum annual out of pocket expenses, coverage for year 2022, self only 7050, family 14100. The maximum annual out of pocket expenses for coverage year 2023, self only is 7,500, family 15,000. Let's talk about an example of that. Let's say, for example, a family plan that does not qualify would be. Joe has purchased a medical insurance plan for himself and his family. The plan pays the covered medical expenses of any member of Joe's family if that family member has incurred covered medical expenses of over 1,000 during the year. Even if the family as a whole has not incurred medical expenses of over 2800 during that year. Thus, if Joe's medical expenses are 1500 during the year, the plan would pay 500. This plan does not qualify as a HDHP because it provides family coverage with an annual deductible of less than 2800. Now, an example of a family plan that qualifies would be if the coverage for Joe and his family from the example I just discussed included a 5,000 family deductible and provided payments for covered medical expenses only if any member of Joe's family incurred over 2,800 of expenses. The plan would then qualify as a HD. HP. Maximum contribution amongst. For year 2022, self only 3,650, family 7,300. Maximum contribution for year 2023, self only 3850. Family, 7,750. An eligible individual who is age 55 and older can contribute an additional 1,000 per year. How HSAs are established? An eligible individual can establish one or more HSAs via a qualified HSA trustee or custodian, an insurance company, bank, or similar financial institution. In much the same way 
that an individual would establish an IRA. No permission or authorization from the IRS is required. The individual also is not required to have earned income. If employed, an eligible individual can establish an HSA either with or without the employer's involvement. Joint HSAs between a husband and a wife are not allowed. However, each spouse must have a separate HSA and only if eligible. If you want to learn how to invest your money, please check out my course on how to invest your money below of the description of this video. Thanks for watching this video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel.